Hello and welcome to Midday Mastery. My name's Steve Woody and this is episode number 12. Today being Tuesday and it is the 21st of February today. And I'm going to talk about strategy. So yesterday in yesterday's Facebook Live, I talked about strategy. I went through it in my book where we talked about the different uh, things in chapter one, which is strategy. And I'm going to embellish on that a little bit more today. So I'm going to spend... Look, I'm going to say I'm going to spend 10 to 15 minutes, but let's be realistic. Sometimes I get carried away. It's going to be no longer than 30 minutes, all right? But please, in the comments, connect, interact with me, because I want this to be about you. There's no point me being here just talking for the sake of it. I want to be able to give you some advice and some real things that you can implement right now in your business. So if you interact, if you connect with me, if you let me know what it is you want, then I can help you with that. So just type in the comments. Even if it's not live, if it's a replay, if you type in the comments, then I'll at least be able to see that, and I'll be able to help you um, like maybe later when I respond. So for those of you that are on the call, say hi, by the way. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, what I really want to talk about today is different types of strategy. Because... Look, let's be realistic. Like When you consider how things used to be in business, it would be that you would sit down, you would write out a business plan, and it would be a big document, something that you would probably take to the bank to get financial you know, leverage in the company. And they were like, I, I remember I used to write them out. I used to go onto like business link websites, and I used to get these like templates for business plans and write out all this stuff that looked really good. But it didn't mean shit, really. I mean, the reality is, like, I have a friend who used to go to corporates to do business strategies. And they used to do these huge documents. And what they used to do is he used to joke about it and say that at the end of the strategy session, they'd pay a lot of money for this day. And then they'd, like, file it in a cabinet. And they'd keep it there and they'd make sure that it was all, you know, secure and never, ever looked at again. Because that's the reality of it. When people do, like, a business plan and they write out a document, once it's done... They're fucking exhausted and they're not going to look over it again. So what that's taught us is that specifically in sort of today's society and in today's economy, people don't want really, really solid, rigid, unflexible business plans. Unless you're a huge corporate and you've sort of grown up with that, most startups, most entrepreneurs, most small business owners need to be agile. That is what gives us the competitive advantage over huge corporations. You are not gonna go toe to toe with Pepsi or Coca-Cola or Disney or anyone like that. You're just not. So you need to find leverage and other advantages for you to be able to make you know, your mark in the world. And the way that you do that is by being agile, is by being direct. You know, if, if if people are sick and tired of just being a number in a system, then you give them a personal, uh, you know, a personal experience because that's your USP. That's what makes you different. And so, in terms of a business plan and looking at the strategy, that huge cumbersome document that you fill in for all—I mean, look—if you need to go and get financial investment, then that's fine. I understand that. For me, when I needed financial investment, I put a Facebook status out, and literally 30 minutes later, I had 12,000 pounds in the bank. And I'm still with that investor today because it was a good relationship and it works. And he's a very, very good friend. You know, that was when we kind of met. And now we've built up a relationship where, you know, we spend time together. So like, you don't have to go to the bank. There's crowdsourcing, there's crowdfunding, there's, you know, there's ways to source money, there's ways to do things. You don't need the bank anymore. So the days of actually going out and writing out these business plans, you don't need them anymore. Rhett, hey, how you doing? Just going to say hi to everyone quickly. Stephanie, nice to see you on the call. Simon, hey. Tina, no worries. You're welcome, guy. Hello. But yeah, definitely. If you can make yourself more agile, more approachable, and, and yeah, being more resourceful, absolutely. This is what's important. So the thing to, re to remember is that if you're going to be agile, it's not about less content. It's not about less value. It's not about because there's less in terms of the size of the business plan doesn't mean it needs to be less powerful. You know, a mission statement is just a sentence, but it's probably one of the most powerful things in a business. So when you consider like one sentence that sums everything up, right, if you can if you can write a really good, impactful, meaningful, purpose-driven, you know, a, a tie an emotion into a statement, 
then that can have more power than like 30 pages of waffle and BS. You know, you want to really make sure that whatever you're writing, it has purpose. You need to know what is your outcome. Know the outcome. Once you know your, and this is for any strategy, by the way, know your outcome and then reverse engineer the process to where you are and then put markers in place so that you can check off that you're actually on track because that's all it is. You know your outcome. Once you know your outcome, you take action. You start moving towards that outcome and then you test and adjust and you make sure that, you know, you, you, that, that's it. That, that's all you need to do. You review it and you test and adjust it. So let's look at the different types of systems because, because we're going to make them more agile. Because they're smaller, there's more of them. So, for example, you'll have a business strategy and your business strategy will be your umbrella. It'll be your over, um, overcompensating uh, strategy for your business. Like, why are you doing what you are doing? Benjamin, hello, good to see you. Um, engage, experience, and enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's really, really good. So, and, and I love that. See, because Rhett, what you've done there is you've summed it up perfectly. Like, you could have spent four pages writing out what a white paper on why it's important for people to study with you, you know, or what you're going to do. And look, here's the reality. Just, just understand human psychology for a moment, because that's what this is. If you're selling a product or a service, somebody needs to buy it. And the only reason somebody is going to buy something from you is if you can, one, make them realize that they need it. Uh, you know, well, there's, there's lots of reasons. I'm not going to go. I'm, I, I'll do that in another video. I'm not going to do that here. But here, the, the point is human psychology. We're all people. OK, so when you're looking at a strategy, you need to understand that as people, as human beings, we are time poor. We are starved of time. It is something that we are bombarded day in and day out with constant advertisements everywhere we look. You know, there's branding everywhere. I mean, you've only got to look at, just, just look around you right now. Like, I can see Apple. I can see uh, Apple again. I can, so, so I can see, I'm just fucking surrounded by Apple. My point is I can see Road for my podcast, though. I can see Buxton for my water. You know, I can, there's all of these different things that I can see. I can see HSBC. You now, I can see that all of these different things, all of these different brands. And I'm, the, the point I'm trying to make is that this is just in my office. If I go out into the public, then I'm bombarded continuously with different things from Tesco's and Sainsbury's and Asda's and all the high street shops. And then I watch TV and I'm bombarded again with adverts and I listen to the radio and I'm bombarded. So we are continuously bombarded with companies trying to sell us stuff, stuff that normally we probably don't need. And so as a result, our time is very limited. And that, I'm just giving it as an example because it is the same in anything we do. When you look at your website, when you look at your business, when you look at how someone engages with you, they need to get it instantly. They need to understand, this is what you do. This is how you can help me. This is what I need to do. Once you get that, once you understand that, then you don't need to make these really long, drawn-out processes. There's just no need for it. There's just no need to make things. like I, I spent so long procrastinating. I was It was like... Um, information paralysis I was just like I was writing so much I was planning out so much and look I mean I'm doing it at the moment I'm sitting here with my whiteboard planning things out so I like you know you have to plan things there has to be strategy in what you're doing but the real power is not in the strategy but in the implementation it's in knowing what to do and then being able to go and do it and if you make it too overpowering, if you make it too cumbersome, if you make it too long-winded and it takes you too long to implement, then the chances are you'll either have missed the window of opportunity or if you do make it to market, someone probably would have got there before you in terms of, um, of getting something out that is more agile than you. So looking at different types of strategy, we've got the business strategy and that can be summed up in a mission statement. So you need to know your vision, you need to know your purpose, you need to know why you're in business, what you're doing, what your outcome is for the business. You know, like, for example, what Rhett said is to engage, experience and enjoy English. All right. That's beautiful because it, like, it helps people to understand exactly what they're doing. You know, you're, you're an English teacher, you've got an English school and you're helping people to engage, to experience it and to enjoy it. So, I mean, you can test it and you can find out what works. And this is the other beautiful thing. Nothing that you do is going to work 100%. I'm going to repeat that because that's really important. Nothing that you do will work 
100%. Perfection is its own imperfection. So you need to get out of this reality or this concept of thinking, oh, I need to make it perfect. Oh, this needs to be absolute like bollocks. It doesn't. 80-20 is the Pareto principle. You know, you put in 20% of the effort to get 80% of the results, you know, or when you look at it that, you know, 80% 80% of your clients are going to waste your time. It's only 20% of your clients who are going to pay you 80% of your money. You know, however you look at it, whatever you look at, the, the attention is in, is in the minute, it's in the smaller details. So you don't need to have a huge, huge, massive strategy. You just need to have the points that are going to get you to your outcome. Reverse engineer it, that's that done. Once you've got your business strategy and you understand that, then you need to look at, there are different types of strategies. So for example, you've got your marketing strategy. Now, I would say sales and marketing, but I like to put them aside because I believe they're different. Because I believe that sales and marketing are two separate things. I think your marketing strategy is how you attract people to your business. So you've got your business strategy, all right? And then you've got your marketing strategy to go out and to attract people to you. And then you have your sales strategy, which is how you convert them from subscribers or from traffic into customers. There's a pivotal shift when somebody goes from being an an engaged subscriber or a listener or a viewer to being a customer. There's a a, a psychological shift there in in, in the whole balance in the the business when someone actually... And that is why people have these low-end offers to get people in to engage them, to get them to convert into a customer because it changes the dynamics of the relationship. So you need to understand your marketing strategy. Now, just to touch on that briefly, your marketing strategy does not need to be every single social media platform. You know, my marketing strategy is Facebook because that's what I use because I've used it for so long now that it, I, I, have, I have a great presence on here. You know, I've maxed out my friends. I've got my business profile. I know Facebook intimately. I know it very, very well. I know how it works. I know the dynamics and I enjoy it. I like it as well. And it's where a lot of my customers are. You know, every good thing that I've got out of Facebook um, in my life has come pretty much out of Facebook. So you need to understand where you're going to work. I don't use Twitter that much. You know, I have a great LinkedIn profile, but I don't really use it that much. So I'm not saying you can't build out your presence on these platforms, but just understand, don't go onto a social media platform just, don't go onto a social media platform just to promote yourself. Social media is all about engagement. It is all about connecting with people. It's social. And so you need to understand that a business owner, if you're just on there to promote your stuff, to get your stuff out there. Yes, you need a marketing strategy, but you need to understand that you're putting content out there and that people are engaging with it. Pretty much like what you guys are doing now with me. So Rhett, my strategy is win my apartment complex. Right? Well, first of all, Rhett, be more specific. What does win mean to you? Right, here's, because that's a, actually, that's a great point. I'm really glad you've made that. Whatever your strategy is, you'll get whatever it is that you ask for. So if you say, I want some money, You'll get some money, you know, here's a pound, thanks. Be specific. How much money do you want and by when? Because the more specific you get in your strategy, and I'm really glad because I was going to mention this, but you kind of segued me into it. The more specific that you are with your strategy, the more specific you are with the point of, like if I just say to you, I, I, my, my marketing strategy is to attract new clients. Great, here's four shit clients, there you go. You know, you need to be specific. My marketing strategy is in the next four weeks to attract 20 qualified, high quality um, clients earning between 10 to 100,000 pounds a year. Like when you get more specific in your strategy, you'll get better results. So it's really, really important that you understand that, you know, when when you said uh, win my apartment complex, can can you divulge a little bit more into that? Can you give me... Uh, a little bit more specificity within what that strategy is because I'm curious like what does win mean to you and how does that look like what's the outcome win my apartment complex does that mean you want to own your apartment complex and if so what do you need in order for that to happen because for a strat okay so to launch my 36 clients to take my first reading course by March see that's fantastic because now If you know that you need 36 clients, I love this, because now you know you need 36 clients. So now, because that's your business strategy, you can now say, right, I need a marketing strategy that is going to attract 36 qualified clients to me. Okay, I need a product strategy so that I have my reading course ready. So you can now start to look at the 
the strategy that you've got within your website to create your course. You can start to look at the strategy of your nurture strategy, how you're going to nurture people through that sequence. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do now. There's different types of strategies. You've got your business strategy, your marketing strategy, your sales strategy. How are you going to convert those people? For example, you're not just going to get 36 people. Chances are you're going to need a lot more. And actually what I'll do is I'll share with you now because I, I've got my screen here. I can, I can show you this. Um, I have, I'm going to flip the camera around. I've got on my uh, desktop my, uh, my strategy. So just to sort of give you this as an example, bear with me a sec, because if I flip this around, I don't know how it's going to look. Okay, so this is an example here of my strategy. So this is a strategy that I was using. Um, this is what's earned me £30,000 this month. This, this right here is backwards. Hold on a sec, I've just realised. Let me just flip this around. There we go. Um, this is my strategy. This is what has generated me £30,000 this month, and I'm hoping to close the month out on 50000 That is my goal. I wanted to do a £100,000 month. I don't think I'm going to achieve that because reality is I don't actually want to achieve that now. And the reason I don't want to achieve that is because I've got the clients I want to work with. I'm fully booked now until May, and I'm more than happy with that. So this was the strategy that I used to adopt that. And as you can see, it's pretty damn simple. There's one funnel, there's not a lot to this. So I had adverts that went into an opt-in. The opt-ins delivered one reason. Okay, so there was these, this was a video that had one reason, then there was an opt-in, the opt-in had a nurture se sequence of emails. From there, they purchased a seven-step course, then as a bonus on the seven-step course, they got access to a free webinar, they attend the webinar, and at the end of the webinar, they purchased a core offer. Now, that was my process. Now, by having a simple, agile strategy, I actually managed to adapt that and I changed it. Because what I looked at here, and I'm gonna show you this is why this is important, is look at the numbers. I wanted originally 100 people to purchase my offer for 1,000 pounds. That was my 100,000 pounds. So then, if I was looking at how many people needed to attend the webinar, and I'm looking at getting about a 20% conversion, which meant I need 500 people to attend the webinar so I can convert 20% of them so I get 100 sales. Does that make sense? Do you, does that make sense there? Because when you start to reverse engineer this, when I look at what is my outcome, my outcome was 100 people. If I'm going to close 20%, that means I need 500 people. Now, between the people that register for the webinar and the people that show up to the webinar, I reckon only 30% of the people that register are going to show up, which means I actually need 1,750 to register for the webinar. Yeah, those maths, there's, thereabouts. It doesn't seem right, but that seems about right. And then, yeah, these numbers aren't right, but I'm just, anyway, you get the point. This is just an example. So, I, and again, 50% of the people that purchase the course are going to register, which meant if this was going to be, for example, let's just say like this was 50% and that was 500 to 1,000 and that would mean 2,000 here. So what we need to start doing is reverse engineering all the way up so we can see how many people need to see the ad. And then we work out how much are we going to spend on the ad and, then, and I've done this before, we talked about this in other videos. So if I'm working on a 5% click through, 20%, 20%, 50%, 30%, 20% all the way through, how many people need to see this ad to be able to convert into sales? And then how much money am I going to spend? Because I can tell you right now, by looking at this and making 100,000, I was going to have to spend 20,000 on ads. So this is my strategy, it's simple. Now the beautiful thing about this is actually, I didn't do this, and 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 I didn't do this. All I did, I took all that out of the equation, that whole thing, all I did was Midday Mastery, Facebook Lives, and a podcast. And I went through my database because I have an existing list, and I used those three things, and I pushed them straight to the offer. That was it. I cut that entire process out, and I just had Midday Mastery Sessions, podcast, Facebook list, straight into the offer. And that was it. That was all I needed allowed me by having that to be able to so let me just put this back by having that that allowed me to because i knew my outcome right i knew the outcome what i wanted and look just before this facebook live i got off the phone with a client literally 10 to 15 minutes ago and i just closed another ten thousand pound deal you know there's money coming into the bank right now i'm I'm in the position, I'm not saying this to brag, I'm not saying this for my ego. Look, I really don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, I did this and I made that. I'm telling you this because the reality is it was only last month. 
it was like two months ago that I was struggling. When you look at the last part, like the last six months of last year, my whole life, I was like, like that part of my life, I was struggling because I did not want to sell myself. I didn't want to position myself. I didn't want to market myself. It didn't feel right. But now I've put a strategy in place. I love my business. I love what I'm doing. I'm passionate about this. I care about this. And I'm really fucking good at this. And so I'm in my flow, which allows me to put this time aside. If you, if you notice me, and look, I'll be honest with you here and I'll be vulnerable. One of my biggest challenges, like previously was consistency it was doing things consistently and now i'm actually following through now i'm actually doing things consistently my podcast is going out my facebook lives are going out now i'm delivering for clients we're hitting targets we're structuring things we're saying right here's a strategy this is what we need to do let's do it next next strategy let's go next strategy let's go and it's like that and we're just moving and we're getting results and we're going from here to here to here because guess what things evolve things change and something I learned in the army, which rings true now more than ever, is that no plan will ever survive first contact. Let me just repeat that. No plan will ever survive first contact. You need to be agile. You need to be able to take a sit rep, a situational report of your surroundings and say, do you know what? This is where I am. This is what's going on. And this is what I'm going to do about it. If you have a plan that is so rigid and things change and you don't change with the things that... Because look, if the marketplace shifts and pivots and you're MySpace and you don't innovate and you don't update and you don't change to meet the needs of the marketplace, then you will go out of business. Then Facebook will come along and snap you up. If you're driving your black taxi around London and you're not willing to innovate and you're not prepared to do what it takes to change because you're structured in your environment, then Uber will come and snap you up. Because that's what happens. That's the, We're in a competitive world right now. Everything is about information, implementation. You know, we're connected on a level we've never been disconnected before. And this is, this is the perfect time. There will never, ever be a better time than right now. And so you need to know that if you are sitting there just planning and planning and planning and planning and you are not implementing, then you are missing out. All right. This is a small opportunity because as soon as the big corporations pivot and when they start to move, we're not going to have a chance. You know, when a big corporation finds a way to be agile, we've just lost our competitive edge. So as a small business owner, we need to know what it is that we need to do. And that is by having lots of different small strategies different types of strategies so that you can be agile and you can do the things that you need to do. Guys, I hope that helps. Um, one of the other things I would say, just to leave it on this note, because there are, there are so many different types. Look, we've talked about a business strategy. We've talked about a marketing strategy. We've talked about a sales strategy. You should have a nurturing strategy. All right, you need your product strategy, otherwise known as a sending transaction model, you know, where you start and get people involved and then you build up and build up. There should always be a what's next so they can continue the journey. Unless you are actually at a point where they're done and, and then that's fine. But if they're buying a product from you, then can you do support? Can you do service? Can you do installation? You know, if you're doing a service, then... And, and look, one thing I can't stand are like are coaches. I'm going to give you an example here. One thing I can't stand are coaches who find problems that aren't there. Who are like, oh, you know, this, this, this client is coming up for renewal, so I better find a way to keep them. If, if you're done, you're done. All right. If you don't have a next step, then let them go. Don't, don't just hold on to things for the sake of holding on to them. Look at your business and say, how can I take people to the next level? All right, so I've done a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and now that's come to an end. Maybe I'll do a retreat for all of my one-on-one -on -one coaches, uh, my, one of my one-on-one -on -one students. So there's, like, there's always a next step. There's always another thing that you can do and you can start to innovate because the reality is, and this is what Mike Dillard says, and I love this, is that every offer has a shelf life. Every offer that you create has a shelf life. Like, if you went out there right now and you created this amazing offer and you were like, I don't know, let, let, let's just give you an example and say one hour website. Let's, I'm going to give you an example and say let's, say, let's say one hour website. Let's imagine that I had a list of absolutely everybody who needed a website. That is a finite list. There are only so many people on it. And once I've hit all of those people, imagine if I hit them all at once. Yeah, I'll make loads of money. But once they've all got a website, they don't then need a website. They may need an ongoing stuff, but they don't then need a website. So the reality is that I don't want to hit that entire list at once. You have to trickle into it. It's much better to have a hundred thousand pounds a month than a million pounds at once. 
you know, because it can continuously, like that £100,000 may last you for two to three years, which means in the long term, in a long term strategy, you're actually going to earn more. You're going to get more out of it as long as you can just structure it right. So the point that I'm making here is that you don't want to put an offer out there and attract everybody all at once. You want to attract enough people in. And I went through this, go back through my videos, look at the one where I talk about how much you should charge. And we looked at money. We talked about what you need to earn as a person, what you need to earn as a business. This isn't about greed. This isn't about just consuming and getting as much as you possibly can. This is about living a fulfilled life and about adding value, solving problems and enjoying the process. So if you can do that, doesn't mean that you need everybody. You don't. You just need a, a part of it. And if you take the whole part, it's like the golden goose. If you know that analogy of the golden goose, you know, every day a, golden, uh, a, a goose laid a golden egg and they was like, the farmers were like, oh, wow, we've got a golden egg, we've got a golden egg. And after a while, they got greedy, they cut the goose's head off, opened it up and there was no more eggs. Right? You don't want to cut off the hand that feeds you. If you have a source of income, then you want to you nurture that, you want to trickle that, you want to get people in, you want to build them up, you want to work smaller, build them up. And then when you create a new product, because they love, know, like and trust you, because they're your raving fans, then they will become you know, lifetime customers and they'll buy the next thing and the next thing. So when you create your new offer, they'll buy it. And that's not just saying you should create an offer for the sake of it, but just consider that, that model. Because that's something where when you're looking at your different types of strategy, if you're rigid and you've just got one strategy, it'll only last you for so long. Right? You need to adapt, improvise and overcome. And so for that, you need to be agile and for that, you do not need to be tied. into. And I'm not saying structure isn't good. I'm not saying you shouldn't have guidelines. I'm not saying that there are things there are not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have things in place. I'm saying as an entrepreneur and a small business owner, specifically a startup or somebody who's in their first one, two or three years of business, you need to be agile. And then what I would say on the back end of that, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is have a backup strategy. All right. Have a have a fail safe. If things go wrong, have a plan. All right. Or at least if not a plan, then at least have the ability to create a plan like and I'll leave you with this because it's just the perfect, uh, it's the perfect example. My whole personal life recently, for many of you, as you may know, completely changed. Right? And I had no plan. But I know that I'm confident in my ability to do what I do and how I do it that I've managed to change things. If I was so rigid, if I was so, you know, if I was like, no, the only thing I can do is sell my book. The only thing I can do is sell my course. The only thing I can do is, if, if I was like that, I would be trapped. And I'm telling you now, I would not have created the freedom that I have. I wouldn't have the ability right now to be able to sit here and say that I have just had, like, we're what? We're 21 days into the month. We're 21 days into the month. And this is the best financial month I've had of my life. And the only reason I have the confidence to sit here and to tell you that I'm able to close these clients is because they trust me. They know me. They like me. They can see the results. Look, at the end of the day, I can be a nice person, but that doesn't mean shit. These are business people. They want results. I've shown them a way they can get results, and they're happy with that. And because they're happy with that, they've invested in that. And it's like now, now it's about me putting a strategy into their business and for them to implement it. So I can't possibly be telling people what to do unless I'm doing it myself. Does that make sense? Like, I have to be in a place where I'm, like, I'm not one of these douchebag marketers that's going to sit there and say, buy my shit from the back of the stage and then screw everyone over. Like, I'm invested. I'm invested in my clients and I have to get results for them. That is so important for me. More than anything, because I've got a 100% money back guarantee if I fail. So it's like, I don't want to refund anyone. Like, I'm really, really, I, I like money. I want the money. And so the only way I can keep that money is to earn them more money. Because if I earn them more money, they're not going to be worried about what they've spent. If in three months' time they haven't made anything, they haven't taken any action, and they're still confused, overwhelmed, they don't know what they're doing, guess who looks like a dick? So it's really, really important that you need to have agile, simple strategies that are flexible, that can adapt, that can withstand the marketplace, and that can get you results. Know your outcome. Take action towards the outcome and then just test and adjust. 
Have an amazing day and I'll see you back tomorrow. If you have any questions at all, please, in the comments, let me know. If there is anything on strategy that you specifically want me to focus on tomorrow, because look, this whole week we're just talking about strategy. So I'm going to go through different types of strategy again tomorrow, but I'm going to sort of make it more specific. If there's anything you want me to go through, please, please, please let me know. If anyone needs to know about this or you think this is valuable, please tag them in the comments below so they can watch the video. And again, check out my YouTube channel because all of this will be uploaded there. You can subscribe and then you can get all of the updates as they go out. Have an amazing day. I will speak to you soon. And just so you know, I have one place left on the 1st of March. If you want to work with me, you can. The reason that I have one place left is because I had to let somebody go. Unfortunately, somebody, after we had a call, um, they, they just, they, they're not ready. They're just not ready. And it's not worth them spending six weeks with me because they're not going to get that. They need to go away and work on, like, I can say it because it's all right, they're not on Facebook. Um, they're, they're not in the right mindset. And they're coming from a place of lack and they're coming from a place of scarcity. And I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to say anything. I want to be respectful. But I'm just saying that I'm very, very specific now on who I'm working with. If I don't feel like I can get, like, I know my outcome. My outcome is to get results for my clients. If I don't think I can get results, I'm not afraid to say no. I'm not afraid to say I can't help. I'm not afraid to say, I'm sorry. Here's a refund. Here's your money back. This isn't right for you right now. You need to do this instead. And so that's happened. I've got a space, so there's only one, and I'm not taking on any more now because I, I'm very comfortable and happy with where I am, and I'm not greedy. All right, I'm, I'm, my debts are being paid off. I've got a plan in place. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy with what I'm doing. I actually am really looking forward to taking some time off. I'm, I'm looking forward to just getting to the place in my life now where I can look after me, where I can take some time out to enjoy life, and where I'm not struggling and catching up and, and, and going through this process, like all of my content's been created now. I've got two amazing developers I'm working with. I've got, hey River, I was, just, I was literally just about to say, I've got two amazing designers as well. River's just joined the call. He's one of the guys I've got working to do all the design work and stuff for me. Look, I've got people to implement now. I'm not implementing anymore. That's not my thing. And so I found what I like doing and I'm enjoying it. And if, like, if this is as far as we go, like, if, even if we don't work together, and even if you are only coming on here to gain the knowledge and to gain the value so that you can get yourself to the next level, then, then just fucking use it. Like, take what I'm saying, apply it, use what works, leave what doesn't. I am more than happy to give free content out as long as it's broadcast to a massive audience because that helps my exposure. So if you benefit from this, then please, by all means, you do not have to work with me. I will give you everything I can. Just let me know in the comments so that I can specifically tailor it for you so that it's not a waste because I want to make sure if you're on the corner, if you're giving me your time, that I'm serving you in the best way possible. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.